The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. Fargo 2019 here with Mike Duran, the California women's developmental coach. This is a guy you see everywhere in Fargo for two reasons. One, California girls are winning on the big stage. They're in every medal round. And two, his glorious collection of California Angels hats. I'm, I'm still not going to call him the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. I'm a diehard. This guy definitely is too, Mike. Good to finally get you on the show. Uh, I appreciate it. You know what? I'm always uh, happy to sit down and uh, talk Angels, but we could talk Fargo too. So the theme this year, as I've, I've introduced on every show, is your favorite Fargo memory. And, of course, this tournament's been other places other than Fargo. But right off the bat, what are some of your, your favorite memories of this tournament, whether coaching as an athlete or growing up? I mean, what, what do you remember the most about this place? Uh, you know what? For us, I mean, we've had a long streak of wins. And um, I really love to just come here and outright win. But, you know, what? some of my favorite memories are um, – the uh, tough wins and even the tough losses. You know, when you come here, you come here knowing what uh, what you got to do to get it done. And then when you got competitors that push you to, you know, push you to your limit, test you, you know, that that's the best thing. Like I said, I've taken a couple tough losses. We lost the national championship by one to Washington a couple years ago. And that was rough, but it drove me to come back the next year and uh, and win it again. So, you know, ups and downs at Fargo, that's what it's about. You guys have a just – a, you know, to borrow the L.A. Raiders, the you know commitment to excellence or tradition of excellence, whatever it is, you know, whatever Al Davis used to say, it's on the on the on the stadium there. But since the cadet girls have been introduced, you guys have basically ran the table. Then there's the juniors, which you know, there's other states, New York, Washington, you mentioned, have really good programs, Texas, Hawaii. But what what is this? I don't want to say secret, but what is the recipe for success for the girls wrestling out here, in international styles in Fargo? You know, it's been a commitment from our home coaches. Uh, you know, we lead not just because we were the first ones to get out ahead of it, but we have coaches that are committed to our, our women and our female athletes. And even this year, we were uh, kind of low on our returning athletes. Some of them already signed. Some of them were injured as far as, uh, you know, returning national champions and seniors. And we got a good squad of young cadets, and I wasn't sure what to expect. But we got here at this camp, and, man, hardworking um, committed, looking to learn, and we got five cadets in the finals. So it just goes to show that really the credit goes to our home coaches. When it comes to getting these girls out for wrestling, you know, some of them aren't, aren't wrestling until they hit the ninth grade. Some of these girls you have out here are really in their first or maybe first, second year of wrestling. How, how do you get them coached up so well? I mean, such a big state, such a broad expanse of, of networks of coaches to deal with. You know what? It's about um, trying to, to run that thread throughout the state that, you know, we got to get to to the tournaments we got to get to. You know, we're really pushing, getting out to body bar. Secondly, we're encouraging more coaches because we are such a freestyle-driven country. I mean, excuse me, folk-style-driven country. We're pushing our girls, we're pushing our coaches to get started in freestyle early, and the earlier the better, and they're jumping on board. And I really think that's what's helping us progress uh, at a at a state level, at a national level, and putting so many of our girls on world teams. I think from U15 all the way through juniors, uh, we have almost, I would say, somewhere near to 20. I, I could be wrong, but I know we got a load of kids. And it's, at, uh, it's pushing freestyle. We have to push freestyle on the women's side. A little bit about your backstory. How did you get into coaching girls? You know what? Um, when I came back to coaching, uh, there's a coach at Cumberland's, Donnie uh, Stevens. Donnie was my buddy from a neighboring city who had a three-time uh, women's state championship team. And I was a new coach. I had one girl on my team, and I knew he did girls. And uh, I walked over, and I said, Donnie, what do I got to do? And he said, follow me around everywhere. And I followed him to our, our women's state tournament. I followed him to our California USA state tournaments, our Fargo qualifier. I went to Body Bar when it was in Florida. And you know what? I really owe a lot to that guy. Secondly, um, Marcy Van Dusen, you know, um, our former director and former Olympian, was um, huge about telling me where we needed to be. And you know what? I just learned from everybody I could, you know, Terry Steiner, Emma Randall, um, you know, Clarissa Chun, all the people from around the community that were willing to contribute, to, to guide, 
And uh, I took that all in, and I went back home. I built a girls' team for my high school, and then I took over a director and started building uh, our uh, national team. And, and for that, I'm grateful to a lot of people, but that's kind of how I got in. The question is kind of asked quite a bit when you you got men coaching women. Differences in coaching boys and girls, especially at this age group. Definitely. Girls don't like to be yelled at. They're not like guys. We don't, you know, guys, we get motivated, you know, when somebody says, hey, man, that guy just kicked the crap out of you. You know, girls, not to say that that they don't take some of that motivation, but for girls, you know, um, they want to be encouraged. You got to build a relationship. You got to take time to talk. And and that's just a difference between boys and girls in general and men and women. And I think if you're a guy going to coming into a, the girls arena trying to employ the methods that you use with the guys, you're going to have a struggle. And I think you have to learn... Like most anything, anything your environment, learn how, how to work within that environment. And fortunately, I learned how to work in that environment early, and I've been able to build great relationship with kids. And um, it is different. It's a, it's a different world, but if you take the time to get to know girls, they love community. They love to, to, to get out there and support each other. And um, for that reason, it's a great, great area to work in. And there is, the, you know, the, the section of the population that does like that intensity. Force Molinari has made that abundantly clear, California native. But, again, getting to that level, your senior level, you can say, okay, we're going to gravitate to to styles like the brands is it, at the Hawkeye Wrestling Club. In terms of senior level success, what's it mean to you to see, you know, girls like come from a first-year cadet out here and maybe take, you know, Force was seventh. It's her best finish out here, and now she's on the world team. I mean, what do you see as stories like that? How do you tell girls stories like about what Forrest is doing? Well, you know, fortunately, Forrest is from California. Secondly, she's uh, on our Titan Mercury team. And um, I'm, I'm able to share with girls, especially from our state and from around the country. If you look at Forrest when she was a high school kid, you know, she was tough, but she isn't who she is today. And even just a year or two ago, you can see, you know, her progression to where she is today. And, you know, we saw that interview of her on uh, Instagram where, uh, you know, I train in Iowa. Let's go. You know, and, and she has that intensity. And the girls come and they strive and they thrive with that intensity and um you know i just tell my girls hey you got to keep uh raising your roof don't look at your local tournament as being the biggest thing don't look at your high school tournament being the biggest thing don't look at fargo you know look at the world and once you are able to raise that roof to what what uh what they're shooting for then um they can do anything i'm really proud of forrest man she's killing it she just uh took first this past weekend and uh we need to look towards athletes like that to push us and get us ready for uh that olympic year California's kind of been one of those states, again, where there's the sheer numbers. You know, you have the opportunity to, to, to your large pool to, to pick from. You're going to have success out of that. But the CIF finally sanctions girls' tournament. It was a little bit of a controversial issue this year with, the, with no more platform at, at, at the state tournament, but running the girls side by side with the boys. Uh, you know, once seeing that for the first time, what was, the, what was it like when you, that finally happened? You know what? I was very skeptical at first. I felt like we had our own tournament. We had our own venue. You know, I didn't think that we needed legitimacy to be in the boys' arena. And uh, I went into that tournament with a lot of skepticism about what what, what it was going to be like. Were we going to get pushed into a room and then uh, brought in? But you know what? I'll commend the CIF State Committee because that tournament was run super well. It was um, evenly distributed between males and females and um you know i did feel bad i liked the raised stage but you know what they did a phenomenal job of highlighting both the boys and the girls i think it also helped a lot of the men uh or the the male coaches on the male side to look at women's wrestling a little bit different and i think they might have come in with a little bit of uh, negativity a little bit salty about you know that stage getting taken away and us being in their arena but i think on the positive side, I think there was a greater number of coaches that left that tournament thinking, you know what, this was a good thing, and now possibly open to having girls in their room, just like, you know, Buchanan, who's been dominant throughout the state of California. They had Cristel Rodriguez in their room, the first girl, and now she's a state champion, and now she's making a world team, going to head off next week and hopefully, you know, become a world placer. So I think, you know, initially I was a little skeptical about it, but you know what, leaving that tournament, man, it was phenomenal. As we circle back to the success of high school wrestling, 
another Californian has been absolutely involved in that. And, and uh, Joan Falp has, you know, Lee Allen's widow. She has been uh, really helped pushing the USA Wrestling side of things. You know, Sally's doing her thing with Wrestle Like a Girl. USA Wrestling has the uh, the women's committee and working on getting high school wrestling sanctioning. What's it like for you to see state after state after state, New Mexico, Arkansas, these are states that are adding girls' high school wrestling tournaments? Yeah, you know what? They're tremendous advocates you know Joan Fulp I, I was able to sit down with her in uh, Oklahoma at the Hall of Fame banquet and talk with her and Sally Roberts and get their vision for what they want to do and what they're really doing is pushing wrestling it's not just girls wrestling they're promoting wrestling and they want it to get out there for everyone they want to see our men continue to go they grow they want to see the women grow and um, when you get good people like that you know leaders like I said Terry Steiner you know you know embracing it and um, and then it it it, uh, it overflows to uh, you know John Smith to the brands brothers you know Hawkeye wrestling all these people that are welcoming women's wrestling and 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 back to what I said not just women's wrestling wrestling and at a high level you know I get it we've had to grow and uh, in our technique but you know what the women perform at such a high level that I think everybody's excited everybody wants to get a piece of it and uh, I couldn't be happier about it I mean it, it's been so exciting to watch the next step is women's college wrestling the recommendation for emerging sports status is there from the NCAA the NAIA had an invitational. The WCWA is in its 15th or 16th year. Menlo College swept both the WCWA and the NAIA. But, you know, a small school like Menlo, great success with California girls, but a bigger school is going to move the needle. What, what do you think is the best option or, you know, what school are you kind of kind of looking at going, okay, NCAA time, you know, it's got to be somebody. It's got to be first. Who, are you, who, who would you like to ultimately see add a women's wrestling program at the college level in California? You know what? Um, Menlo's done a great job. Um, we need more schools in California, but I think when you see a, a, a legendary program like Iowa begin to have girls in the club, you know, um, when you see uh, coaches like John Smith, you know, coaching our women at the world level, those programs, I think, if they adopt it first, if they really, you know, take on that, that task, I think you're going to see everybody behind them really want to do it. Because, you know, like most any, anything, it, we need a leader. And when you have a leader at that caliber, and those people that have such historic programs. I think when those schools really start to, to buy in, which, like I said, with, with, with club wrestling, they are, and I don't see any reason they wouldn't be at the NCAA. Um, once those programs uh, take on that task, then, then we're going to see an explosion. There has been a little bit of chatter. I'm not sure how much it's got legs, but about the, uh, the, the junior college system, you know, adding women's wrestling. It, you know, you know anything about that? Anything you can fill us in on, possibly? Yeah, definitely. I'm a Mount San Antonio, Mount Sac uh, Community College alum, and uh, I talked with Coach David Rivera just recently, and um, he said, hey, man, I need women. I need girls. And uh, from what I understand, what we talked about is that there's five teams in the north, five teams in the south that are adding it. Unfortunately, it is starting out in folk style, and that was just to kind of sell the administration. The administration, you show them, you know, freestyle, and they see people flying and, and getting thrown, and they weren't really about it. But there was no objection, from what I understand, at the meetings to changing to uh, freestyle. So um, they're going to start it out definitely in, um, in California. And I know, like, with programs like, uh, like Mount Sac, you get priority registration for being on the team, which means you get all the classes you need to get in there and get out. You get a good program that uh, is going to um, show you uh, show you the way and try to get you to uh, the next level, trying to graduate you to a university and to a college. So, um, you know, the programs are out there. It's awesome to see that it's coming to uh, California at the community college level, and we're trying to be leaders with it. And um, I think you're going to see some good things come, come throughout the country also at the community college level. you have an idea on a timeline? Because that's not, again, that's not news that's been you know, widely circulated. Next year. Next year, yeah. I just, like I said, uh, Coach David says, hey, I need girls. Um, they're going to run that in a different season as the boys. I think, I, I believe we said spring, but um, don't, don't uh, quote me on that. But um, it's, it's there. It's, it's open. And uh, they're going to start taking girls in. So if you're looking for a place, Mount San Antonio College is a place to go. <laughs> it's what, the Mounties, right? Yeah, the Mounties, definitely. The little guy with the furry cap and a pistol. Oh, it's sad that I know that. Now, lastly, this is, uh, we're, we're going to shift gears a little bit to our, our common uh, kindred spirit is the, is the Angels. You told me before we started that you were at the most 
heart-wrenching game in, in probably Angels history. Explain how you became an Angels fan. And if you're not a wrestling fan or you're not an Angels fan and you like wrestling, you can check out now because we're going to geek out about the Angels for about a couple minutes here. You know what? Uh, it was funny that we had talked about that. Dave Winfield, Donnie Moore hanging that curveball up to Dave Winfield. And uh, I'm sorry, Dave Henderson. Um, I, I happened to be, we were at home. My, my dad's buddy says, hey, let's go catch the Angels playoff game. This is back when you can ride in the back of a truck and pile a bunch of people in. And uh, we, bile, we piled into a little Nissan uh, truck, and we went to the game, scalped some tickets, sat out in center field, and we're just crushed and heartbroken. And uh, that was all fine and dandy. You know what? Uh, came back a few le- years later, a long time before the Los Angeles Dodgers have won a championship. We're the last one to have a championship in the L.A. area, so uh, I'm more than happy to be an Angel fan. But 86 was my first year, and, and I've been super glad and happy to, uh, to wear a flat-billed Angels hat everywhere I go. I got a more of a broken-in, lower-crown Angels hat that I also So every year you're sitting, Matt won, Coach Russell, I was like, ah, there's Mike with the Angels hat. I love it. I love it. You got the tattoo of the old logo on your leg, too. Yeah, definitely. I had to represent California and the old uh, CA California Angels logo, and that just shows my commitment to them. I love uh, I love the California Angels. I go the, all the way back to the the Brian Downies, Kingfish, uh, Salmon. You know, um, you know it, it, they've been a good program. You know, uh, historically uh, they they've been around for a long time, and it's a good organization to be involved with. Now we got leading the way with the best player in baseball, Mike Trout. Signed him, and I believe that uh, you know he's going to bring in some young players. I believe we, you know, we got new leadership, which you know I love Mike Sosha. I think it was a time for change. Not that he was doing a bad job, just a good time to make a change. And uh, you know, watch out, we're going to be coming. Ultra World Champs, best sports year of my life. The Bucks win the Super Bowl, the Angels win the World Series. I win my fantasy football league. Just can't top that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. There's no top in that. Only thing is the top of it, a top it would be another championship. The Short Time Wrestling Podcast is proudly outfitted by Compound Clothing. Shirts, singlets, custom gear orders, everything you need. Call up Cliff and the crew at cmpteamwear.com. Hey, you know what? Did you like the show? You want to hit that subscribe button? MattalkOnline.com slash listen. Various different ways to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcatcher of choice. And if you're already subscribed and you're already listening and you love the show and you want to support this show and this network, MattalkOnline.com slash join the team. Become a team member today.